The Falcons Audible presented by AT&T is back once again. I'm Derek Rackley joined by my fellas Dave Archer and DJ Shockley and we are back here after a Falcons victory as we talked about last night they went across the pond and they got off to a great start against the New York Jets and came home with a victory. We will dive into that performance. We'll just dissect it a little bit but first let's give them a little bit of a rundown of what we're going to be covering. We will get into our kind of our one word answer short and sweet and the question is going to be, what are the Falcons so far that we've seen this year? I'm going to have the guys uh, kind of be short and sweet with that one. Ooh, Tell us what luck. they think the Falcons are. We saw <laughs> an emergence of Kyle Pitts, fellas. The, yeah. num- the first round draft choice for the Atlanta Falcons. And I think this is what everybody was waiting for. We'll dive into Kyle Pitts a little bit more. Arthur Smith, is he changing the identity of this team, this offense? We'll talk a little bit more about that. The defense rising to the challenge, especially with some injuries on hand. And then we'll... Get into a little bit of story time and talk special teams. Talk some kickers as we had Your some wheelhouse. interesting Let's stuff going on go. this past weekend. Uh, and then we'll look ahead for the Atlanta Falcons, of course, on a bye week this week. But what happens after the Falcons finish with a bye? So that's kind of the schedule, the rundown for the show. So let's get to you guys here because they didn't come here to listen to me. Rack, you got your, I hope you got your guys. one word too. So <laughs> we got to stick to it. You got to stick to it. All right, Arch, I'm going to start with you. So. One word answer, and then you got one or two sentences right to support it. Like okay. I'm now, good. our producer has said, like, <laughs> I have the ability to deduct 500 points if you break the rules. Okay. What I'm deducting them from, I have no idea. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So, but I'll let you know if the points get deducted. Okay. So, one word answer, quick support. What are the Falcons as you see them right now? Evolving, okay, is my word, and I think that we saw that this weekend. Is we begin to see an expanse of what Kyle Pitts can be. We see the ability of of the depth on this team to adapt to what Dean Pease wants to do defensively. I think he's evolving as to what they want to look like. Pressure group, non pressure group, bend, don't break, red zone toughness. I think you're evolving on both sides of the ball. Okay, that was short and sweet I mean, enough. I, know, I mean, but did that have commas or anything in it? I it mean, it so was like, a I mean, little, it might have been borderline run on sentence. What are you, punctuation I'm police? Just saying, what are you, what are you, he said one sentence. That's no, all I'm saying. I gave him doing? two. He can oh, have two. Oh. So I think there was one period in there. One. And then like 16 commas. But it's okay. <laughs> he was still in. Didn't have to take away any points. Nice okay. job. Uh, Thank you. Uh, Thank you. Uh, DJ, careful now. Because right, you went, right. you started to criticize it, so I you got to make sure you stay short and sweet. What you got? <laughs> I'm going with intriguing. Okay. And I say intriguing because the way this team is starting to play, some of the players are starting to play and improve, it's intriguing to me where this team can go. Yes. You think about what we had go on a couple of weeks ago where you go get a win, now you got another win this week. You didn't play the way you wanted to last week, but now – it's intriguing to see what this offense can be. It's intriguing what Dean Pease can do when everybody plays together. So I'm going to go with intriguing, and I'm way shorter than Arch. <laughs> what? You just did a full paragraph no, on the thing. No. <laughs> if we're going to talk grammar here. Okay, his was two sentences, yeah. and yeah. his might have had 13 Rack, comments. your turn. Your turn. Okay, my turn. Yeah. And I see when you host it, you get to bend the rules a oh. little bit. Mine is work in progress, but there's, there's two hyphens in it. <laughs> Okay, so it's still just one word, right? It's There's no break. No there's no way. space or anything like that. No They're a work in progress, and it kind of builds on what you guys are talking about. We're seeing good things happen on occasion, yeah. but it's work in progress because it's not snap after snap, right? And there's not a perfect team out there in the NFL, but you want to see a whole lot more of the positive plays where all 11 are working together more than the fragments. Right. So yeah. it's work in progress. We're definitely seeing flashes, but... As we know, it's got to get better. Yeah, okay. No doubt. Now, work in progress. Some of those good pieces we saw was the first round draft choice. Yes, Kyle sure. Pitts had a f- fantastic game against the Jets. Kind of had to, right? Without Ridley in the lineup, without Gage in the lineup, it was where's the offense going to come from specifically in a passing game? And you'd like to think the Jets probably were anticipating it was going to be Kyle Pitts. Still couldn't stop him. What right. did you see in the game, DJ? And what should Falcons fans be excited for in weeks to come after what he showed on the field in London? Rack, I think the, the number one thing that comes to mind for me, what is two things, is the versatility in the way you used him and then also the way that Arthur Smith uses him creatively in this offense. I mean, the dude ran a freaking post uh, for God's sake, on the outside and ran by a corner. I mean, <laughs> there are times you see him split out. You see him all over the field, but I love the versatility of the way he's playing. I think he's becoming a little bit more comfortable 
uh, playing in the National Football League. I think people forget just because this guy is a number four overall pick and this guy comes in with all this hype that it doesn't, tell, it doesn't take him time to get used to the speed of the game or how he can use his body versus these NFL style of players. And even – I can hear the comfort level starting to get better when he talks to you, Arch. I remember going back and listening to him week one when you interview him. Everything was short. Everything was, you know, I'm just trying to figure it out. And now, yesterday, I mean, the other day when you talked to him, I feel like this guy's been around for a year. So I love the fact that he's becoming a more versatile, but also just you can see him selling in and being more comfortable. And I think Falcon fans are going to like it week in and week out. And I think he even mentioned, he said that to you, is I'm starting to understand – uh, my role in this offense, and I'm starting to understand what I can do within this league. And he can only grow with the kind of game he had. You know, I think he had nine catches on 10 targets. I mean, that's pretty efficient. Yeah, nine catches, 119 yards, and a touchdown. DJ, it's a great point because that's kind of what I thought too is he's getting comfortable finding his role in this offense. Mm-hmm. And you might say, how, how does that happen with a guy that has the amount of talent that he does? But I'll give you a comparison. And I think it has a lot to do with personality. I've never met him. Maybe you can end up compounding on this. But, but Kyle Pitts kind of seems more like the like he's a nice guy. Kind of, you know, he, he, doesn't, he doesn't come across to me as like the pit bull that comes in the locker room and he says, I'm going to take this. Yeah. Right? So, and I'm not, I'm going to give you a comparison. But when we were playing Algie Crumpler, one of my good buddies, he had a little bit different mentality when he stepped in between the lines. True. Algie, when he came in, was like, when I'm on the field, I'm going to catch every ball that's thrown my direction. He had a little bit of a, like, I'm going to attack you. I'm going to compete with you. This is my game type mentality. And I could be wrong, Arch, but maybe that's not quite it for Pitts at the start, but that's what he's growing into. Would you agree or or what did you see that's maybe different on Sunday? It's a good analogy with him and Crump because obviously I had a chance to call a good number of Crump's games. And, and so Crump was that guy when, when you blew the whistle and said, let's go play, he wanted you to throw every ball to him. Yes. I think that Pitts has that in him. I, I think that as a – and, and maybe we're – if you start trying to judge him on Crump – it, you saw him as a young player, and then I see him evolving, and maybe you're trying to you combine some of those years together, at least I do. We're just getting the first taste of this kid, yeah. and I think he has that in him. I think it's a great comparison. Crump was an outstanding player here mm-hmm. for the Falcons. He was Michael Vick's go-to guy, yes. and I think this guy could evolve into that. This game certainly doesn't hurt that scenario, but I think that's a good analogy, and I think he's got that in him. Um, and to add on what Shock was saying – Let's not forget there was a plan for this kid to do a lot of stuff. Okay, we all played the game. This is a complicated game on an offensive side of the football. And then multiply that by the fact he's playing probably four different positions. Yes. So he's not just lining up on the end of the line of scrimmage. Right. You got him off the ball. You got him in the slot. You got him out, out wide by the numbers. And you guys, we all know – those are different positions. Those are that isn't just the tight end flexed out. Right. He's now the Z receiver. He's now playing H. He's playing Y. I mean, you're going, wow, that's a lot. And so I've been using the analogy. He's been drinking through a fire hose. They've yeah. been trying to give Dave Ragone's been trying to give him as much as he can give him. <laughs> but once you learn what you're kind of supposed to do, we all know the game adjusts on the fly based mm-hmm. on what you see coverage. So there's adjustments out of every one of those positions as to where your route's going to go. So he's trying to get that. And at the line of scrimmage, if Ryan changes the play, he's got to be able to absorb that. Wait right. a minute, the wheels are spinning. Wait a minute, that's not what I got anymore. I don't have what we called in the huddle anymore. <laughs> I got something else. That's what this kid has been going through. So to get impatient and say, wow, it took till five games for him to get off, Think about what the dude has been trying to absorb and do, and then just use his physical talents, which are off the charts, and we saw it again this week. So let me throw this back to you guys on pits because I think this is something where a lot of people are interested in this. What is the next development for him? Because I think everybody up to this point knew that he was really talented, talking about the opponents, right? Knew that he was really talented, but he hadn't quite produced. He hadn't quite taken over a game. Now that he kind of took over a game – and Miami in a couple of weeks is going to turn on the game take, and they're going to start preparing for Kyle Pitts. So what's the adjustment, DJ, back from the Atlanta's offense to where he's still able to be productive now that they're going to be keying on him? I think the biggest thing is finding ways for him to be consistent within this offense. And you look around the league, 
regardless of who you're playing, you think about a Travis Kelsey, you think about a Darren Waller, uh, you think about a Rob Gronkowski, it don't matter what game you go into. These guys are going to get their touches. And I think Arthur Smith already has shown the ability to be creative enough where he can find ways to get this guy to football. He can feature him. You think about coming into a game where you don't have your top two receivers and Ridley engage, and this guy still has 10 targets and nine catches, and you mentioned to come out the top, they still couldn't guard him. Yeah. So the fact that you come into every ball game knowing, I got to get this guy touches, I can find ways to get him touches, and you can dictate that for the most part coming to a ball game. We all know you come into a game plan, and you know what they're going to do on second or third down. You know what they're going to do on first down or in the red zone. And you can find those matchups to get him easy catches. And I think they're doing that, and I think they will continue to do that. So the consistency of Arthur Smith trying to get him the football, I think will continue because – you got to be real. He's going to be a big part of this offense and what we do. Well, I think there's a confidence aspect for Matt Ryan, too, now, Arch, because he's like, I got to keep feeding him the ball. Yeah. Even if I do feed it to him in the next game 10 times and he only comes away with five or six catches, I would still like to take my chances with Kyle Pitts on those five or six catches. But in your opinion, like, is there any adjustments that need to be made or is it just a matter of, Matt having confidence, and then the rest of the supporting cast doing their job so the entire defense can't just focus on him. Yeah, no, I think that that's, that's a big part of it, guys. And I think that he's got to maintain the work at level that he's had where he continues to refine his game. Could be a little bit sharper on, this, on, the, on the post route. Can I be a little bit more – uh, can I give a little bit better of an indicator as to where I'm going to come out of my break so Matt can let the ball go a little bit further? Shock and I will both tell you that receivers have body language and they have indicators at the top of routes or in routes where you know you can throw him open because he's coming out of the break. That's part of what Ryan's been trying to learn about this guy. Okay, what what does his body language tell me on a post route? Okay, now I can let it go and I can throw him open or I can get it out. Ryan told me post game when I talked to him in our radio broadcast, I said, look like maybe he outran it. He says, I I had forgotten how well the guy runs and I didn't <laughs> want to miss him on the post route. I didn't want to overthrow him because right. it was going to be a touchdown. Yep. So I threw it so I knew he could, so he gears him down. Of course, Kyle's uh, is caught there and, and stopped. But he runs like a wide receiver, and <laughs> yeah. that's kind of different yeah. from seeing a guy that's six yeah. foot six running 245, 250 pounds. Wait a minute, I can let that one go. Like yes. that's Ridley or whoever out there, I can let him go get it. So those adjustments are still being made. But for him specifically, I think it's about, okay, let me work on me. I've got a, a really good uh, – I've absorbed the offense in a multitude of different positions. But let me continue to refine my route right. Let me make sure I'm making it easy for Matt Ryan. So let me talk to Matt. Matt, what am I doing? Are you getting enough of an indicator for me on these different routes? I think that's where he continues to evolve. Yeah. Right, let me add one last thing yeah. to, I mean, what, what Arch just brought up because it, it sparks something in me. And I want people to realize from the quarterback standpoint, and people say, oh, that ball was underthrown. That ball was – for years, quarterbacks have been taught for, rece for running backs, tight ends, just give them a chance. Just put it in their area. Don't yeah. don't try to lead them. Don't try to let them go get it. But now it's totally different now. Like you mentioned, you got this dude out here who can actually run like a receiver. Yeah. Now your mindset has to change from I'm not throwing to a tight end. I'm throwing to a guy who can go and get it. So those are some of the things as a quarterback Matt is going through with him, and they're still learning each other on those particular plays, like throwing a, a go route or throwing a post route to him. So it's different. Still learning, still developing that chemistry. Yeah. And like you talked about, the anticipation. Once Matt starts reading that body language and he can just start throwing the ball before Kyle Pitts even comes out of whatever break, like I'm interested to see some back shoulder throws with these two now. I mean, can you imagine <sighs> a back shoulder throw with Pitts against a strong safety that's 6'1 or something like that? That seems like it's pretty fun to match up there. I mean, yeah, you, absolutely. You, you see it now. Dudes are already grabbing him because he's such a big dude. They're trying to find a way to get around him. It's going to be tough for defenders. Don't matter you play safety, corner, linebacker, it's going to be tough. Well, and you mentioned Rack, and it, it's a good analogy in the fact, okay, he just caught nine for one. Tw we can't let that guy do that on yeah. us. So what are we going to do to take him away? This was a Jet team that wanted to play a lot of man coverage. Well, it hurt them. Yep. Because they tried to play man coverage in a lot of places, whether it was on CP Cordell Patterson, whether it was, uh, whether it was on Hayden Hurst. They struggled with it. Ryan threw for 345, completed 35 balls or whatever it was in the game. So teams are going to say, okay, we need to adjust what we're doing a little bit. And, and so that will be something that you'll see, and it's going to open other guys up. you know. But you have to catch the football. Yep. Okay. 
Alameda Zacchaeus makes a huge catch in the game on the slant route on third and 13 to get 15 yards and a first down that extended the drive for Atlanta to seal the football game. But he dropped two balls prior to. Yeah. You cannot drop balls. There's not a margin of error for this offense. We're not elite right now on offense. Evolving was the word. I, they're evolving. But you have to make catches. You have to solidify first downs. And that's something they're going to have to continue to get better at. That's the difference between like teams that are good and excellent teams are really good ones don't drop the ball. Right. Right. And the excellent ones make the really tough catches. Right. And bail a quarterback out. Right. Sometimes sure. you got to just help them out. Yeah. Quarterbacks are really good in this league, but they don't always make the greatest throws. Sometimes you just got to have that circus catch. True. You guys talked about some of the supporting cast. We had a, it was a pretty good game for the tight ends, not just Kyle Pitts, right? We saw Lee Smith. We saw Hayden Hurst contribute in that game. Some of the issues previously has been closing, finishing. Do you guys feel like, DJ, we're starting to see Arthur Smith learn this team and create an identity on how he's going to close games out? I mean, I know we're just talking about one more game with the Jets, but like, are you starting to see more of an identity with Arthur Smith and how he's going to continue to call plays and manage things towards the end of the game? I do, and I think he will continue to be aggressive in the style in which he calls plays to end ball games. And for me, I think about it in this way. A team needs to go through it before they can believe it. Like, we could talk about it all day. You can get into the meeting rooms. We could say, all right, here are three or four plays that if we do X, Y, and Z, we win the ball game. It takes for you to go out and do it for things to feel differently. And I think for this team, you're going through those moments, you're going through those times where you say, all right, if we go out of here and we do what we're supposed to at the end of a ball game, this is the outcome. And now you can actually put it on film and say, all right, here's an instance where we did it. And now guys can say, all right, well, okay, if I did my little job here, I got to play to win, and they did that. So I, I, I love the fact that they're finishing these games now. Um, obviously, you want to – it's hard to do it every single week in the National Football League, but if you go out and you, and you play the way uh, that they played, it, it's, it, it's tremendous and it'll give you a chance to win. I, I, and I, I keep saying this about Arthur Smith is I think he will continue to coach to the strength of players as opposed to just calling plays. And I think right now he's using his personnel – to the strength that helps his team and not just call in plays. Because we yeah. know what kind of system he brought coming in. Yeah. And you knew the kind of players he had. But now he's using the strength and the personnel of these guys to win ball games and not just call in plays that he feels like are winners that he's used in the past. He's using his personnel, I think, to his advantage. And ultimately, that's going to help you down the stretch. Arch, you got to be able to finish, right? Nine play, 75-yard drive, took over four minutes off the clock, capped it off with a touchdown. Like, that's, that's how you win games at any level, right? Not just in the NFL. Did you start to see things as far as Arthur Smith and how, maybe how he's calling plays, how he's managing down and distant to where you you think he's starting to kind of figure things out a little bit? I think that, again, I'll use the word evolving. I yep. think that he's evolving as well. Remember, it didn't get it done two weeks ago. Yep. We talk about finishing games, had a really poor last offensive drive where you went three and out, which included a negative play on first down, and you punted the football, and the, and the defense couldn't get the stop, and you lost the football game. Go back three weeks ago. And you did get it. You got the defensive stop. You got the offensive team goes down the field, kicks the field goal, wins the football game. So it's kind of a, as you said, I'll use your phrase, work in progress. Yeah. There is some stuff there where he's trying to mold this team. And what and there's also trying to mold how he attacks the game. Shock talk about being aggressive. You know, we all know there's, an aggre there's a level of aggressiveness that is, can be over the top. When you you aren't you aren't taking advantage of of moving the clock and working the clock and making you burn timeouts, but I don't want to just settle into the fact that okay I'm going to do this and we'll make you burn your and then we'll kick it to you. Yeah, you got to have those times where you can reach out and strike oh, yeah. them. And yep. so I still think he's trying to work through that as well as a play caller here. It's not Tennessee, as Shock said. Yep. This is not Tennessee. That's here in the personnel group he has here. I don't know if you guys it, it, you guys may remember this better than I do. Maybe I'm I'm confused, but I think. The Jets go down, and they make it 2017, and we get the ball back. And I believe first or second play is where we throw the, the post to Pitts. Is that correct? Uh, is yeah, it that I series? can't remember the play yeah. sequence but, there. Yeah, yeah I, I'm just thinking of they go down and score. They got all the momentum. And instead of, like you just mentioned, being conservative. Sitting on it. Yeah, yeah. being conservative. Hey, you go attack them. Well, and you that's found another big play the week before, right? Because yeah. yeah. you did that the week before, and it cost you. Right. Yeah. I think you'd like to have your offense on the field, no offense to the defense. Most teams, 
I think, would like to finish the game with their offense on the field. Whether yeah. you're salting the game away or you're going down to get a game-winning score, yeah. you want that group on the field. Because let's face it, we're not the only team that struggled down the stretch. I mean, yeah. we saw it, saw it on the Monday night game, right? Where that's a game that, that probably, for all intent and purposes, in a lot of people's minds, is over. The Colts yeah. are way ahead. And here comes Lamar Jackson. They come down the field and they win the football game. So uh, with a number of scores in that fourth quarter. So it happens to everybody. You want to be able to settle the score no pun intended, with your yeah. offense and yeah. get it done. And I think it speaks exactly what you just talked about with Arthur Smith was the week before there was a different plan going in trying to salt the game away. And this week he totally changes how he goes about that plan. So you can see just from a coach's standpoint of how he's evolving, like Arch says, and for me, it's intriguing. Yeah. Oh, see? Whoa. See that? <laughs> these guys are killing it. They keep coming back to these words. <laughs> well, that was what we were told. We told it was right? kind of yeah. theme type yeah. show. Well, I mean, so. I, I knew it was going to happen at the beginning. <laughs> yeah. You guys yeah. are showing yeah. me, like, how good you are at your job. Well played, like, no doubt, no doubt, no doubt. They no even doubt. worked money my now. word, hyphenated word, yeah. back into I did. it. Yeah. Like progress. Yeah. It's in progress. Yeah. This episode, in part, brought to you by The Home Depot. There are officially no more excuses about why you can't get your bathroom fixed or why you can't build a deck in the backyard. Not sure where to start? No problem. Everything you need for your next home improvement project is just a tap away on the Home Depot app. Their digital toolbox gives you access to how-to guides, project calculators, image search, so you'll always know exactly what you need to pick up. Don't have the tools you need? Rent items from drills, blowers, carpet cleaners, generators, and more. Big or small, indoor or out, the Home Depot has the equipment you need. With the tap of a finger, you can reserve equipment ahead of time, swing by, and pick it up and get started. Ready to invest in your own tools? Browse through millions of items from top brands you can have delivered right to your door. Whatever your project, find exactly what you need with the Home Depot app. Download the Home Depot app today. All right, speaking of crushing, we're going to segue over to the defensive side of the ball, right? Yeah. Now, we talked about pieces for the Falcons' offense that was not on the field this past mm -hmm. weekend, making it difficult maybe to find consistent production. Same could be said defensively. They're missing some pieces on that side of the ball too, but I want to ask you, Arch, are you excited? Granted, when you get to your second and third string at any position, it can be a little bit worrisome, right? You can spend some sleepless nights because you're like, I don't know if this kid's going to be well, able DB to. Well, certainly spends some right? sleepless nights. But there is a benefit because we're starting to see some of the younger players forced into action and you develop depth, right? Are you happy with how the depth building on the defensive side of the ball is coming along? Yeah, no question. I, I thought that this was an interesting weekend. Yet you your number one and two nickels are out of the game. So uh, we know Isaiah Oliver's gone for the season, and we're praying for him, and hopefully he can get back as quickly as he can with the injury. Avery Williams had the hamstring. He's out, so that's mm -hmm. your backup nickel. Those – Rarely do you use – that's kind of, that's an auxiliary position or maybe that 23rd starter on your defense, yep. that nickel spot, because we play, what, 65% of the game in nickel. You're down to your third guy there. So Darren Hall, the rookie, is forced into play. You had Richie Grant playing some of the nickel spots when they wanted to go big nickel with an extra safety on the field. Jalen Hawkins makes a play yes. uh, in, in place of Eric Harris, who was out with an injury. So that secondary, who's kind of been maligned a little bit and was talked about as – being a weak link on the defense, I thought came up big in this game. Now, I get it. And the fans at home saying, well, wait a minute. You're playing against a rookie quarterback and, and all that. And, and and that is true. You yep. were playing against a rookie quarterback. and I th But I thought you made him look yeah. really bad in the game. I thought he – they were going into their final drive, which became trash time after that touchdown you talked yep. about, Rack. Yep. They had less than 200 yards of offense in oh, the yeah. game. Yeah. I mean, they they ran, I think, six plays in the first quarter. Uh -huh. I mean, that's getting teams off the field. That's a National Football League team. Mm -hmm. That's not, you know, Kent State you're playing. Yes. you got you got somebody uh, – no offense to Kent State, by the way, but uh, <laughs> I guess it is an offense to him. But, but no, you, you went out and you're taking – so that part of it with younger players and different guys that had not played a lot of meaningful minutes for you stepped up big. And that's – from a confidence level, you guys know as young players – as an older player, you know, you have a nice game. And you say, okay, you're kind of confident. When you're a young player, your confidence goes exponentially through the roof. I'm Darren Hall. I'm Richie Grant. I was yeah. on the field. I made plays. I'm Jalen Hawkins. Boom, I'm right here. Now. I got this. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like, I, I can got play it. in this league. Yes. I belong here. Yeah, so, I mean, DJ, same type of deal. Like, 
you know, you always want to go into a game in the NFL with starters, right? Like, obviously, it's usually the guys that are making a lot of money. They yeah. have proven themselves. They have made those plays. And if you're Dean Pease, like – you got younger guys, maybe more inexperienced guys. You have to understand that some mistakes are going to happen, but you throw them into the fire. Were you pleased with the performance and how you can build on that moving forward? Uh, no doubt about it. I mean, you talk about putting these guys in positions where they can be successful and they where they can win. And you can see DP drew up some stuff in his ball game where it wasn't um, really exotic at times. There's a lot of things where you saw a couple zone blitzes here, a lot of coverage. You also played man here and there, but I thought they did a good job of understanding their role inside this defense. And the one thing I always go back to is when you're trying to improve your depth, they're trying to improve uh, younger guys, the older veteran guys have to be the standard every single week. And I think every single week we've seen Grady make a play. We've seen Dion and Foyer, they're lean tacklers. When you have your core guys making plays, the other guys around them feel like, okay, I got to make sure I pull the end of this rope as well. Mm -hmm. Because if not, guess what? It's going to be very visible on film, and these veterans will go to coaches and say, hey, look, this guy ain't getting it done. I need somebody out there I can depend on. And I'm glad to see in this ballgame these guys – had a moment in the game or had moments where they had to make plays and they made them. I mean, Jalen Hawkins easily in a cover two could drop that ball. We've seen guys not come up with those type of yes. plays, but he came up with that play in the ball game. And I love the fact that, that he was able to do that. And like Arch just mentioned, it's going to be a tremendous confidence for these guys to know that they got a chance to play 50, 60 snaps in the NFL game and show that, Hey, I do belong. It's the same instance when we talked about with Kyle, these guys have to go through the same maturation process of understanding how they belong on that side of the ball, but also that they belong in the National Football League. Regardless of how you know, talented you feel you are, there's moments where you feel like, okay, I can actually play with these dudes out here. Yeah. I've been watching for years. Yeah. So it's fun uh, to maybe see those guys kind of thrive. It's two positions you guys probably agree, maybe you don't, but that I've always felt like you got to have the most swagger in the NFL and it's wide receiver and it's defensive back, right? And a lot of these younger guys we're talking about are DBs. So let's hope that some of this experience helps them go play with that swagger yeah. on the field. Because when you're locked up on somebody, yeah. you're out on an island, you're yeah. playing man-to-man -man coverage, it's just time, you know, who wants it more? Who wants to compete more? And if you got that swagger, you can do that. Give our, give our man uh, Adi Ogadeji a little love, too. I mean, he's another young guy. I think he had a sack in the game. He yes. had a nice open field tackle versus Carter. I mean, that's a guy who we saw in preseason who was making a name for himself and, you know, got a chance to play some more too. DJ, you mentioned guys that we can depend on. Segway here, okay? <laughs> Young Wei Ku is a guy that the Falcons can Koo. depend on, right? He's been really good. However, the story for kickers in the weekend or on Sunday <laughs> was very interesting to say the least. So we're going to have a little bit of fun here. We're going to do some story time, and I'm going to have these guys talk some about some kicker stories that they have. And, and Arch, I'm going to start with you. You've a your long storied career playing in college, playing in the NFL, covering it um, as a broadcaster. You've got to have some good ones of some kickers that you've seen throughout your time. Well, story is probably right with my career. A lot of stories. I don't know how storied it was, but a lot of stories. Uh, a couple come to mind. First of all, okay, I've always kind of kept the kickers at arm's length. <laughs> and I know you had to play. You were very close. You were part of the, you were part of the battery. Length. You yes. had to be kind of a psychologist, yes. I would assume, with your position. No, no, you can make this kick. I'll put it right there and you can kick it through. So uh, I've always felt like if you don't have to wash a guy's uniform after the game, he shouldn't, you know, is he actually a football player? I mean, I don't know. That's just kind of, uh, kind of stuck in my head there. You know, because they just hang the uniform back up in the locker and move on. Those are guys that played video games. When I was playing – You'd come in, and they'd be in playing a Sega Golf on yeah. TV or something yeah, yeah, like yeah. that. Dude, we're practicing outside. Yeah. yeah, but I'm only out between periods 10 or <laughs> right. 11. And that's right. For our new viewers, Sega is like PlayStation <laughs> and stuff. Yeah. Like Sega. Some people I, like I, I had to keep Sega, it relevant. No I keep it relevant. Okay. Anyway, All right, ahead. so kicker-wise, we had a really good one here when I was playing here in Atlanta with named Mick Lockhurst. Uh -huh. and, and Mick was an English fellow, and you know, speaking of tea, having your tea – uh, good, really nice person. Uh, carried a briefcase to to yeah. practice yeah. for what I have no idea. <laughs> to a kicker. He's got a briefcase. Anyway, he, he took it on the field. No, no, he didn't carry. Oh, it okay. I was no, say, it wasn't. Whoa. It wasn't. It wasn't, it wasn't handcuffed yeah. to his hand like the Blues Brothers thing like that. He'd leave it in his locker, but he brought uh. it to practice. What has he got in there? You know? <laughs> like a peanut butter sandwich or something uh, like game that. Game plan as far as I know. 
car uh, kick it between the uprights. Uh, so anyway, I, I held for Mick, and um, he was a left-footed kicker and very particular about how he wanted the ball tilted. Most there are, you know. Hey, just a little tilt to me. Laces out, of course, you know, and, and all those guys. You got a good snapper like I'm going to say, that's all right. They always provide that's that. That's all Laces right. Just put it out. there, right? So you yeah. just do it. So I just caught it and set it on the, on the deal. But he wanted a little tilt to him. Well, anyway, we're playing the Cowboys on, in Dallas, time. and he's made 21 in a row. Okay, and at, at that time, it's the, it's the best in Falcon history, or he's right on the edge of breaking the record for the Falcon. I think it was, he needed one more kick. Uh, and he's closing in on the NFL record at the time for kicks in a row for one season. So we get a snap into my down knee, Uh-oh. which yep, is yep. tough to handle anyway. Okay. So I get I get the ball up, and Mick, we had an operation where boom, but he saw yep. the ball come out, boom, he's coming. The good ones do. You are a part of good ones, and so I got it down on my knee. I get it back. I set it down, and he kicks it twenty one in a row now, and I block the kick. Oh, with my, my other hand was hand. still on it. My no. hand was. I couldn't clear my hand yeah. in time, and it. It wobbles. Mother. It's only like a 35-yard yeah, kick. Yeah. So it it wobbles shot. down and just hits the ground. And I looked up at Mick, and he looked at me like, what did you just do? Oh, you know, and I, I felt dang. so bad yeah. Yeah. about it. And then I remembered that we're not going to wash your uniform, so it doesn't matter. Because <laughs> 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 so at the end of the day, I don't care about you being you're, mad you're at on me. this team, but you're not that important. <laughs> so Dave's like... I'm not really going to feel that bad about it. Okay. <laughs> sorry. No, but I, I blocked his kick and ended his streak. I, I'm sorry, Mick. I know, I know you're watching. Goodness. All right, DJ, you got anything? You got anything good? Yeah. So what? one is a quick one. I, I remember uh might have been my rookie or second year. We had a dude everybody knows pretty well, and my man, Morden Anderson. Oh, yeah. And I remember Morden had these shoulder pads, and I swear they were smaller than the ones that my little guy wears right now who's nine. I mean, I think you can call them shoulder pads, I, but they were just like a couple pieces of plastic that exactly might have they, been glued together. They were like the Fisher-Price shoulder pads. <laughs> I was like, more, where do you get these things? I think right? he wore like, the ah. helmet that came with the set. <laughs> yeah. But uh, the other one that I have is um, I had the opportunity to be, this is kind of a, a good, good field kicker story. I know a, a lot of stuff hasn't been good for the kickers, but last year I got a chance to be on the call for Sarah Fuller, who got the oh, kick yeah, from yeah. Mandy. Yeah. Right. And all the hype that came around that. And obviously uh, she was, you know, pretty, pretty, pretty emotional about it. You know, uh, first one to, you know, have an extra point kick or have a score a point in a power yeah. five game. So it was pretty cool to be a part of that and see that kind of history go on. Cause I got, a, I got an 11 year old uh, little girl and, uh, you guys know how it is to have, you know, have girls and, you know, be special with them and want them to be able to do whatever they sure. want and be able to do anything in life. So uh, it was cool to have that moment, and, and my daughter was all into it. So it was a pretty cool kicker moment right there where Sarah Fools was able to do that. After hearing you tell me a story from football a couple of weeks ago, though, I don't think your wife is going to want your daughter playing men's oh, no, tackle no. football. She ain't going to know what need. <laughs> she, she, she don't want to go to my – she don't even want to go to her brother practice, so you know she ain't going to be out there. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! Well, you know it's interesting. You guys talk about Morton Anderson. So when I come into the league, he ends up being my kicker, right? And yeah. it's it's like a good and a bad, right? So you feel like you're in a pretty good situation. You do your job, the kicker's going to make it, right? I mean, Morton was like yeah. an automatic, right? One of the best to ever play the position. But it's also a little bit of pressure because it's one of the best. Like he's been doing this for a long time. Like you better do your job well. Fortunately, when I started, Dan Straczynski was the punter at the time, and he was the holder as well, and he was really cool. Like. He was just like, dude, I got you. Like, just put it here. We'll work on it. We'll be great, right? So he was he was kind of like the perfect intermediary between the perfectionist that Morton <laughs> was at his craft and the rookie coming in as Rack, right? But you know what's interesting is when you're a rookie, you guys know this, like you got to go out and do like the hazing dinner, right? Yeah, you yeah, got to yeah. go take your position group out. Yeah. And like the offensive line and defensive line, even defensive backs, like those guys spend an inordinate amount of money when they have to take their position group out. So I'm thinking like there's just two of us, right? Yeah, like we're going we're gonna to yeah. get off, right? Morton's like, oh, no, we're going out. He's like, I got reservations at a steakhouse, <laughs> right? <laughs> and it's on me, Okay. So we get there, and I'm just, like, like inside sweating bullets. Like, what's he going to order, right? <laughs> Sit down. Morton orders a bottle of wine. It's like 100 and something dollars, right? <laughs> off the rip. Right I the mean, top. we ain't even, right even started having a conversation <laughs> yet, right? And all of a sudden, it's like, cha-ching, oh. right? And then server comes. It's like, can we get the seafood tower? Oh, $150 appetizer. <laughs> Right now, like armpits, like they start yeah. sweating. Right? Two fifty in dinner. Yeah. I was an undrafted free agent that did not get big signing bonus money. Okay, uh. like fortunately, he let me get two or three game checks underneath my belt. 
But then it's like, okay, server comes. Let's order dinner. Um, can I get the bone-in filet mignon, please? Eighty-five dollars <laughs> steak. And I'm just sitting back here, like, oh, really? So at oh, the end of the yeah. day, I did it. Like I paid for it. It was probably over a thousand dollars or something like wow. that. But mm. it could have been a whole lot worse oh, if yeah. you're in an offensive line oh, meeting God, room because yeah. those guys just order whatever they want, and that gets to be in the thousands. Yep. Uh, we can have been a whole lot more there. conversations there, about there. kickers. Sure. We don't have enough time for it. <laughs> All right, real quick, let's look ahead. All right, Falcons off this week after yep. playing the London game. After that, they're going to face Miami. Um, Dave, how can they take the performance they had against the Jets, build off of this one as they go and play the Dolphins? Well, certainly you bring confidence in, and you, we, we talked about all the different performances. Uh, Cordero Patterson's been phenomenal. Kyle Pitts is probably going to be at a different level when he enters this game. But from a matchup-specific scenario here, we go back to the Miami game, go back to the preseason game. Mm -hmm. We didn't play anybody from a defensive standpoint, if I remember correctly, shock in that game on the defensive side from a starter right. standpoint. They played their starters. They played their starters almost the entire first yeah. half. Tua Tungvalo yeah. was throwing the football. They've got Miles Gaskin coming out of the backfield, throw the football. By the way, he had like 25 catches in this game this weekend. <laughs> they just kept feeding him. Jacoby Brissett has been playing quarterback there for him because Tua's been banged up. Now yeah. they're talking about Tua being able to come back this weekend for the bye week. They're in London this weekend against Jacksonville, and then we get Miami the following week after the Jacksonville game. So Tua could be back on the field. He played well against us, but Jacoby Brissett has played pretty well as well. They've got a short passing attack. They're going to attack it. They did it in the preseason game, and I watched this game this last weekend with Miami, knowing we got them next. They're a, they're throwing the ball underneath, sprinkling it. Now, they have the chance to throw it down the field some. Jalen Waddle's on his team. Mm -hmm. They've got some guys that can go get it. But they've been wearing people out with that short passing attack. Now, they haven't won a lot of games yet. They're kind of in our boat, you yep. know, where they hadn't yep. kind of come to flourish for them. And on the defensive side of the football, they got some guys that can come be at the pass or some. So, uh, this will be another challenge, another set of circumstances. Styles make fights. They've got a different style, yep, yep. and so you got to adjust to it. What I like about our team going in is you go in with some confidence, a little more confidence than you had the week before, and that, that makes you a little bit better team, a little bit different team than you were the week before. Yep. Our, uh, Shock, same type of thing. Like, he's talking about different – attack right we talked about some of the younger players like maybe now they're going to have to change their focus up not as much turning and running in coverage now it's coming up making the play not missing tackles which yeah. is something that can ha happen for younger players how do you see this one playing out against Miami uh, I think similar thing what Arch talked about obviously this is going to be a matchup that you're excited for because you're going to have a bye week going to have time to kind of recharge and refresh your body and recharge and refresh your brain. And you're going to get a chance to go back out and play the game um, that you think is, I think, pivotal for you at that moment because it's the next one. And you go back to the preseason, like Arch mentioned, the number one thing that everybody talked about coming out of those couple of practices was they were physical matchups. Yeah. They were physical yeah. practices. Those guys went at it. And even though they didn't play in the game, the practices were just as intense as probably a game would be. So I think both teams know coming to this game what to expect. And both teams are a little bit different, obviously, because of the season started and guys in different roles. But I think the overall factor is these guys understand what kind of ball club is coming, and they are in a position where they want to win ball games just like the Jets came in. And I thought the Falcons did a great job of being focused and business-oriented going into the London game and taking care of business. It's going to be the same thing because after that, you know, they don't look forward, but we get a chance to look forward. Hey, here comes a couple of division opponents. You got to make sure you're going into those games feeling confident as well. Go ahead, Dave. Well, I, I just was going to go back to the Jet game. We didn't really talk about We talked about Kyle Pitts and, and what he did. Did everybody recognize the, the little T thing they did after they scored the oh, touchdown? Yeah. He gets that his, was, yeah. That's his first touchdown, yeah. okay? He gets his first 100-yard game of his man. career. And they didn't really show it on TV until later – but they, they, they were holding the little plate, the little sauce in their head and doing the tea. I thought it was hilarious. Blake, yeah. It was really oh, cool, great. really a lot of ingenuity so from some young guys that have never been to England, yeah. never been there before. But their they perception is that people in the afternoon are sipping <laughs> the tea. That's so it. they wanted to sip their tea on the touchdown. I As thought that was pretty cool. As you're sipping your tea while you're watching <laughs> the Atlanta Falcons. That's exactly right. Yeah, very good. So two things real quick before we close off that I felt like bye week, and by week at this point of the season, get healthy, get your mind right. Because mm -hmm. it's earlier in the year. Some of the veterans, this, this has happened before, right? When you come into a season, you look at the schedule, sometimes you love to have that bye week 
week seven, eight, nine. Yeah. Right, right in the middle of the season. Mm-hmm. Obviously, it's eight, nine, ten now that we're playing a seven seed. It's not that case. It's early in the season. So now they're going to have 12 straight games. Right. Right? It's a grind. It's a <laughs> mental it's mental competition. Not only is it physical on the field, but all these young guys have got to get their mind right for what lies ahead. You take it one game at a time, but this is the difference between college and the NFL is playing this long into the season and have to stay that much focused, but that focus for that much. Oh, you think about some time. guys coming in and they only play 12 games. Yeah. And now you come in, you got an extra five more games to play. I yeah. mean, that's a lot. So, yeah. And then you add preseason. Then if you're oh, fortunate enough to yeah. play in the postseason, yeah, yeah, it's, it's an absolute 20 grind. Games, yeah. So fellas, great job. Uh, we will be off next week because the Falcons are not playing a game. So we're going to, ha- we're going to be off. So you got to wait two weeks until you can come catch us again. For sure. But when you do catch us again, whether that's on AtlantaFalcons.com or Spotify or iTunes, by the way, make sure you like subscribe and review on those because that helps everybody out. Okay, make yeah. sure you do guys do that too. We will. Review, we, got that. we got that done. And in two weeks, we will be right back here to uh, talk about the Atlanta Falcons' latest game against the Miami Dolphins. Guys, great job. That was good. Good job. It was, good job, right? th- it was much better than a work in progress. <laughs> we're, evo- <laughs> we're evolving. We're evolving. But guess what? At the end of the day, this podcast is very intriguing, people. <laughs> very intriguing. It's the Falcons Audible presented by AT&T. <laughs> Thanks a lot for joining us. Work in progress. <laughs>